Here we are with another video, and in this video, I will be talking about Elvis. Please note that this video is based on facts and proven evidence from people who was close to him. It is not a direct attack, and if you are a true truth seeker, you will know I don't care about color when I give the facts and the truth. Now, you all know I like to give a brief intro before I go in deep, so here we go. Elvis Aaron Presley was born on January 8th, 1935 in Tupelo, Mississippi to Gladys Love Presley and Vernon Elvis Presley in a shotgun house that was built by his father in preparation for the birth. Elvis' identical brother was a stillborn just 35 minutes before him. He's part Scottish, Irish, Cherokee, and French descent. Even though upon investigation, it was revealed that he had only German and Scottish descent, so who knows? Elvis was close to both of his parents, but mostly close to his mother. He got his musical inspiration from church. Elvis grew up with limited means. His family relied on government assistance. To get by, his father used to write bad checks. He was found guilty of altering a check written by his landowner and one of his employees. He was incarcerated for eight months. Because of this, his mother and he had to move in with relatives. While in grade school at East Tupelo, consolidated, he was known to be an average kid. He did show some interest in singing, especially during morning prayers. He favored Red Folly's song, Oh Shit. He even performed that song, Dressed as a Cowboy, while standing on a chair to reach the microphone at the Mississippi Alabama Fair and Dairy Show on October 3rd, 1945. He came in fifth place. His mother saw the potential in him, so she bought him a guitar and he received lessons from his uncles at church. Later, while at a new school called Millam, Elvis started to bring his guitar to school and he sung at lunchtime. However, he was often teased because they thought his music sounded trashy and that he only played hillbilly music. But please note that hillbilly music was sung predominantly by black people and their color people at the time. Not to mention his family and he were staying in a black predominantly neighborhood at the point. Elvis used to love to listen to Mississippi Slim's radio show station, WELO. He was often teased and often described as crazy about music by his family and friends, but he didn't care. He loved black music. He often mimicked their dances and the way they used to sing. By his teenage years, his family was granted public housing and he began attending Elsie Hume's high school. He never did well in music class because his favorite to Negro music as they called it. Then they also said that he didn't have an aptitude for singing anyway because of his shyness. He was often bullied because they thought he was a mama's boy. He later received guitar lessons from Lee Denson and some of his neighbors for many years. One of his neighbors had some boys, so they formed a loose musical collective and they used to play frequently around the courts. By his junior year, he grew his sideburns out and slick his hair down with Vaseline that made him popular. He used to also hang around Bill Street, which was mostly predominantly populated by blacks and he listened and like all of the blues music and their wild and flashy clothes, you know, and he used to look in the Lanxy Brothers shop. By his senior year, he overcame his stage fright and he competed in a huge annual minstrel show in April 1953, singing and playing his guitar. He'd open with Till I Walks Again With You and recent hit for Teresa Brewer. It was after this performance whereas he really became popular. You see, and I'm moving along here, Elvis got most of his inspiration from black slash color slash Negro music. He was often a visitor at the record stores as well. He especially loved the Southern gospel music and artists such as B.B. King, Rosetta Tharp, and so on with those artists. Heck, by 1953, he already knew that music was his future. So with that in mind, he had checked into Sun Records and paid for studio time to record a two-sided disc of My Happiness. And that's when your heart begins. He said that he recorded it for his mother. Now, nothing came to his many attempts to release his singles and so on. But then the son, Boss Sam Phillips, was known to have said this. 
If I could find a white man who had the Negro sound and the Negro feel, I can make a billion dollars. And he did in Elvis. Hey, after so many singles and him mimicking what other black artists were doing, he started releasing many hits. He was on fire by the 50s and the 60s. He was selling out venues, making television appearances. He even appeared in movies, won many awards, and so on and so forth with his many career endeavors. Let's get personal. Aside from his hustle slash stolen success, Elvis personal life wasn't such a success. With that being said, let's talk about that. While serving in Germany, Elvis met 14 year old Priscilla when he was 24 years old. They started dating in 1963 and she later moved to America and three years later, Elvis proposed and they married in 1967. They had one daughter, Lisa Marie Presley. However, due to Elvis depression, drug use and physical and emotional abuse and countless cheating, long absences and his weird demands such as Priscilla having to wear makeup at all times, like all times. All of that and then some had ended their marriage in 1972. But what's weird was, you know what, just take a look at this. You were 14 years old. Elvis was 24, right? Mm -hmm. How did your parents allow a 14 year old teenager, baby, to be with this then superstar of it was not easy on my parents. You know, first of all, it was just an innocent meeting. And of course, you know, I was excited and I was, I was reluctant because I didn't think they'd ever let me go. But it was just a one-time opportunity. That's all they thought it would be. I never expected him to ask me back. They never expected him to ask me back. But Elvis did ask you back and you saw him again and again. And you would get home very late at night and be exhausted the next day when you had to go to school. Mm -hmm. And your parents let you go again and again. It's, 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 you know, relationship was it's very different. It was um, a very protective relationship from the very beginning. I don't know what it was about him, but he kind of took me under his arm and uh, um, nour nourished me in many ways. You write in your book, you're 14, Elvis would take me into his bedroom and then we would kiss long, deep, passionate kisses and his caresses would leave me weak with desire. <laughs> yes. It's true. Yet he never tried to go further than kissing you. No. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't. There was um, an agreement, I guess, he made with himself that the woman that he decided to take for his wife, he was going to keep her that way and, until he married her. Keep her a virgin no mm -hmm. matter what. Right. Even then, in Germany, when you had trouble getting up for classes, Elvis gave you Dexedrin. Mm -hmm. right. First time you'd seen pills. I didn't know what was going on as far as, you know, um, pills or what they were, sleeping pills. I mean, he gave them to me to be helpful, to say, look, if it's really getting really bad and you're not doing well, you know, take a couple of these. But he was very cautious about them and he said, don't, you know, don't take them a lot and just take them if you really need them. And during the day you got up and went to high school? came home in the afternoon, you said sometimes you'd crawl into bed with Elvis at three or four in the afternoon and he was just getting up and didn't even know you were gone. Mm -hmm. I worked that out. <laughs> and then you stayed up most of the night? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And took pills to go to sleep? I had to. Because we got home so early in the morning, he would sleep until three or four in the afternoon and then he'd get his sleep. <laughs> so I'd be lucky if I got another half hour in. <laughs> and I had to make it work. I had to do it. I mean with a fear of a young girl fearing that if I didn't do it, maybe someone would take my place. I would always had that fear, well, if I don't do this, someone's going to do it, and I wanted to be the one. At one point, you said, in the early stages of your living there, that he gave you two pills. Placidil, was it called? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you almost died. <laughs> and well, he didn't call a doctor. Well, he forgot, I think, the fact that I had never taken pills, and he had given me two, because he was used to taking two. It didn't, you know, it didn't bother him. And uh, he gave them to me, and I was knocked out for about two days. Once, Elvis took you to a morgue. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Why? Why that fascination I, with I don't know. Bodies? I don't know what the fascination was. This is not the first time that he had done this. I don't know if it was for the shock value, you know, to see how people would react, or just um, for his own thrill of it. You wrote... There were times when you and Elvis spent days in the bedroom. Freezing bedroom, he liked it very cold. <laughs> the windows with blackout drapes so no sunlight entered. Day after day. Mm -hmm. 
it went into weeks. Yes, we stayed like that. We had our food delivered uh, by the door. And um, it was cold. I mean, he did like it cold, and it was dark. And it could get real lonely. And that's, that's how he uh, liked it at times. Like a cocoon. Almost like a womb, I guess. Just enclosed. It was his way of getting away. And then every night to go to sleep, he'd take some pills. He'd have to. I mean, he, he would, uh, he, he had a fear of insomnia, first of all. And when he woke up, he had a horrible fear he could never get back to sleep again. And it was real. So every night he took the pills and he gave them to you too? Yes. And they became normal? Mm hmm You wrote in your book that one of your greatest worries was about his co-star, Anne Margaret. <laughs> yes. That's true. I knew there was a fear, an affair. And if you confronted him? If I confronted him, he'd deny it. Or get mad? Well, that's usually what happens yeah. when you're caught. <laughs> so you live with that? Yes. You wrote, Elvis controlled your looks, your clothes, your hair, your makeup. He controlled you totally. Is that accurate? Mm-hmm. I was definitely under a, a spell of, um, of what I thought was love. And I, I had to take responsibility for that, too. But you were 16, 17 years old. But what did I know? I knew nothing else. I had nothing else. I had, I had no experience, not even in life, but with other people. And even though he wanted you virginal and pure, he dressed you sequin, <laughs> shiny material, yeah. low cut, slit up the side. Why? I think maybe it was his way of showing sophistication. I, maybe, um, maybe making me appear older. Um, I don't know. There's some kind of a, an appeal that men like with a trashy kind of look. Maybe he liked some that. <laughs> Yet, you also write that you and Elvis took dozens and dozens of Polaroid pictures acting out your fantasies. All different kinds of fantasies. You learned to turn him on sexually even though you never had intercourse. You did say, though, under no circumstances were his ideas or playfulness ever perverted. No. Do you feel the same way today now that you're older and you look back? Um... No, I can't say it's a perversion. I really can't say that. I mean, nothing was harmful. Nothing was done in bad intent. Nothing was done, you know, that uh, I don't think is unusual. And then you'd have these wonderful, passionate, frustrating weeks, and then he'd go away. Mm -hmm. And then he'd go away. Finally, after six years, he asked you to marry him. How come? What happened? I think the pressure was on somewhat, too. Uh, we've been together for six years. The relationship is going well. You say that you realize that your relationship with Elvis depended very much on how his career was going. That's true. He would just have low points, and when he had low points, there was nothing that could get him out of it. And I feel that's another reason why Elvis felt the help that he had, you know, with, with some of the pills would get him out of that. I mean, he went through a lot. He went through an awful lot. He was, a, a lot was expected of him. A lot of demands were put on him. He didn't know how to deal with it any other way. He really didn't. And he wasn't doing it, um, he really thought he had it under control. How did you get yourself to stop taking all the pills? Because I didn't like the feeling of not being in control. Mm -hmm. It scared me. Mm -hmm. Because I was doing things that, that I wouldn't normally do. Things became exaggerated. Things were much bigger. Problems became much more of a problem. I, um, I just didn't like what was happening to me. Plus, the two of us taking it, we were like, you know, two different people with each other. And it was just one of us had to be in control. And you knew that even then? I knew that then, yes. What about his temper? We hear a lot about that temper. Yes, he did have a temper. He did. It was unpredictable. It's funny now when you think about it, because his temper was always, I think, burst of either it's frustration, but I think because he had the power and the money to destroy, he could just replace it like that. I mean, if Elvis didn't like a performer mm -hmm. on television, he would go bang, bang, and shoot the television set, then Absolutely. it would be all gone. Yes, he'd just blow them off, off the air. That simple. <laughs> and then we, television would be placed like that. Before you turned around, there'd be a new set. Mm -hmm. But he carried guns all the time. Yes, he did. 
he had a, a love of guns and he had a collection of guns and he, he I guess it's another way of feeling that power. Sometimes when he was irrational, he did hurt you. He once gave you a black eye. He once threw a chair at you. Mm. You didn't like something he sang. No. And he threw a chair at you. Mm -hmm. And it had records on it and the records went all over the place. Priscilla, will you tell me what was so wonderful about him? He, the real him, the real Elvis, was generous, wonderful, sensitive, considerate. Finally comes that happy day when you get married in 1967. And then nine months later, your baby was born. Yes. You think the baby was conceived in your wedding? <laughs> I would say so. And here you have this beautiful baby. And now you find, as you write, now you find that your husband doesn't want to go to bed with you. Yes. Elvis had a hard time dealing with mother and the little girl that I was to him. And that's, I didn't know it then, but that's how I found and realized in later years. But he was a father to me. He was, he was my um, mentor. I, he, to, to show any kind of vulnerability or insecurity to me was not macho, was not something that he felt I should see. So our communication was horrible. It was terrible. I mean, today, I mean, I, I would probably be able to communicate with him much more. I would, you know, know how to deal with it. I didn't know how to deal with it then. Yeah. Now, it gets deeper and sicker because it was written in a book titled Elvis Presley, A Summer in Life that Elvis preyed on a group of 14-year-old girls, sometimes younger, who would pillow fight, tickle, wrestle, and kiss him, who was 22 years old at the time. I mean, Elvis was 22. It was even a time where, as while performing in Louisiana, he had sex with a 14-year-old girl and the condom broke. So he asked his friends on tour what to do, and they had no helpful advice. So in the morning, Elvis had told his friends that he took the girl to the emergency room and left her there to get a douche. But what's sick was he was obsessively calling his 15-year-old girl at the time, Dixie Locke, whom just like Priscilla, he had to also dress in clothes of his own choosing and so on. But it wasn't just this craving for young girls that got overlooked. It was also the fact that he even though he stolen from blacks while at the same time hating blacks you see elvis was a racist he was quoted saying this the only thing black people can do for me is shine my shoes and buy my music oh yes and chuck d was quoted saying this elvis was a hero to most but he never meant shit to me you see straight up racist that sucker simple and plain mother uck him and john wayne but believe it or not, the more blacks criticized him, the more the media at the time praised him. They loved the fact that he was capitalizing off of black people. They loved him more when blacks grovel, hence the title, The King of Rock and Roll. This alluding the fact that he was a known rapist, child molester, predator, pedophile, and drug user and more. It was even known that he even killed. With all of this on record and in his hands, he got heightened after he was found dead. But that being said, let's get darker and deeper into that. Okay, we all know that Elvis was a heavy drug user and so on. However, it all started in 1976 after Elvis and Lyndon Thompson had split in November of 1976 because he started seeing Ginger Alden, whom he was engaged to two months later, even though he had no intentions of marrying her. Heck, by this time he had become overweight and he was barely making it from shows and had to always cancel and reschedule them. He was even known to have spent hours in his room obsessing over Monty Python sketches and his own past escapades. Fast forward in here. It was on the evening of August 16, 1977 where he was found dead in an unresponsive state on a bathroom floor according to our eyewitness account. Elvis looked as if his entire body had completely frozen in a seated position while using a commode and then had fallen forward in that fixed position directly in front of it. It was clear that from the time whatever hit him to the moment he had landed on the floor, Elvis hadn't moved. Attempts to revive him failed and his death was officially pronounced at 3.30 p.m. at the Baptist Memorial Hospital. Apparently, he had died of codeine pills that he had gotten from his dentist, to which he was known to have had a mild allergy from. Then, a pair of lab reports filed two months later strongly suggested Pilo Pharmacy was the 
primary cause of his death. One reported 14 drugs was found in Elvis' system, 10 significantly quantity. Oh yes, but in 1994, Elvis' autopsy report was reopened and it was found that he was chronically ill with diabetes, glaucoma, and constipation. As they proceeded, the doctor saw evidence that his body had been wrecked over a span of years by a large and constant stream of drugs. They had also studied his hospital records, which included two admissions for drug detoxification and methadone treatments, meaning that Elvis' death was due to a phenomenon called the Valsala Maneuver, meaning he was essentially straining on the toilet that led to a heart stoppage. Plausible because Elvis had suffered constipation, which is a common reaction to drug use. However, many decades later, and aside from his downfalls and so on, and the double standard how certain people of color's publicized in media versus known predators such as he was, whom continuously is being idolized. Elvis is remembered by many as an icon that had opened the door to rock and roll, regardless of the evidence that he stole in all of his, um, never mind. So with that being said, may he rest in peace.